A virus is not contagious. And we know that it's not contagious because of this study that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. The study was conducted by a group from the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Public Health Service. This group ran a series of experiments to determine how influenza is spread. In order to do this, they recruited healthy volunteers who were all in good physical condition. None of them had influenza. Then they took these healthy volunteers and made them hang out with flu patients. Look. The volunteer was led up to the bedside of the patient. They shook hands and by instructions, he got as close as he conveniently could and they talked for five minutes. At the end of the five minutes, the flu patient breathed out as hard as he could while the volunteer, muzzle to muzzle, received this expired breath. After they had done this five times, the patient coughed directly in the face of the volunteer five different times. I mean, what else do you want them to do? Fart in each other's faces? They might as well test out some queefs. See if the virus spreads that way. Because it turns out it doesn't spread like this. After our volunteer had contact with the patient, talking and chatting and shaking hands with him for five minutes, and receiving his breath five times, and then his cough five times directly in his face, he moved to the next patient and repeated this until this volunteer had contact with 10 different cases of influenza. Each one of the 10 volunteers had intimate contact with each one of the 10 different influenza patients, which means each healthy volunteer got their mouth coughed in 50 times and none of them took sick. Now, if viruses are contagious and capable of spreading from person to person invisibly through the air, how come no one got sick? How come a team of doctors in San Francisco did a similar series of experiments and were also unable to reproduce disease? Not only this, but over 150 other studies were carried out carefully and scientifically, yet absolutely no signs of disease followed. So it seems to me that sickness isn't spread by sneezing or shaking hands or even blowing the mailman. And this is because germ theory, the theory that germs like viruses, spread around and make us sick, remains unproven. Never has there ever been any genuine scientific evidence that any germ is the cause of any disease, including those claimed to be transmitted sexually. And just so we're clear, we're talking about genuine scientific evidence because we were given evidence, but it doesn't seem to be genuine. And just as one example of this, we can look at the proof we were given that polio is caused by a virus. In 1908, German researchers claimed to have isolated polio virus and used it to cause polio in monkeys. Their method was to inject a pulverized puree of diseased brain tissue into the brains of two monkeys. One monkey died and the other monkey got really sick. Headlines trumpeted this proof of polio virus causation. It doesn't sound like proof to me. Does it sound like proof to you? If it sounds like proof to you, here's what I want you to do. I want you to drill a hole in your head and inject butterscotch pudding into your frontal cortex. And if you get sick, then we'll know that butterscotch pudding 
causes polio according to your scientific standards. In the mid-1950s, physician Morton S. Bizkind testified before Congress that polio was the result of a central nervous system poison and not a virus. The chief poison of the day was a chemical commonly known as DDT. It was used in World War II to control mosquitoes and by 1945, DDT was available for public sale in the United States. Government and industry promoted its use as an agricultural and household pesticide, and they really did promote it pretty hard. For example, this was an ad that ran in Times Magazine, where you can see a cow and a woman and an apple with some kind of perverted twig body and they're all saying DDT is good for me. However, if DDT was good for them, then why was there a direct correlation between pesticides like DDT and polio? And as you can see over here, whenever there's a spike in pesticide production, there's also a spike in cases of polio. And this is consistent over a period of 30 years, a clear, direct, one-to-one -one relationship between pesticides and polio leaves little room for complicated virus arguments. Polio shows no movement independent from pesticide movement as one would expect if it were caused by a virus. So maybe, just maybe, illnesses that we're told are caused by a virus are actually caused by some kind of poison. Here's another example. This graph shows the number of grown men who shit their pants in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and the amount of Lumberjack Slam breakfast plates consumed at the local Denny's. You'll see that it's the same exact one-to-one -one relationship, where at 9 a.m., around 29 people are eating a Lumberjack Slam breakfast plate, and at 10 a.m., 29 people are dropping a shit in their pants. Now, based on this information, do you assume that all of this sickness was caused by a stomach bug, a virus that's being passed from person to person, or do you assume that two buttermilk pancakes, a slice of grilled ham, two bacon strips, two sausage links, two eggs, hash browns, and a whole loaf of toast will make almost anyone soil their anus? We have to understand that it's not the germs that are making us sick. A virus doesn't cause diarrhea. Denny's does. You gotta wake up. Don't slap snooze.